Joe, can you just describe uh, difficulty at the start of the game? It seemed like they were really paying a lot of attention both to you and to Karis, and you guys had had trouble getting into gear until they had a, a big lead. What, what were they doing defensively, and what can you take away from today? Uh, they were definitely just the more aggressive team, both offensively and defensively to start. And, uh, you know, good, like, it all coincides with all good takes together. They ended up jumping out on us. Momentum shifted a little bit uh, and ended up getting, you know, by 30 at one point. So we uh, definitely dug ourselves a hole there where they were just definitely the more aggressive team on both ends of the ball. Hey, hey. Christian? Hey, Joe. Uh, a lot's been made of the Raptor defense. Obviously, it ranks number one in the Orlando bubble and number two for the course of the entire year. Um, I'm just curious, did, did you guys ever settle into it? And is that what led to some of the runs that you guys were able to make in the third quarter? Uh, their defense is phenomenal, you know, when they're in a set position and they're able to kind of go against you and have to work. You know, we know that. And uh, our whole thing really to start the second half was just trying to play with more pace. Um, and a lot of that is what we do defensively. So if we're able to get stops, uh, get rebounds, get out in transition, then we can go against them. Um, in more of sort of an attack mode where we don't have to go against them in a, in a set defense or half court setting. Tom? So particularly early on, you know, Karras is averaging almost 10 assists the last couple of games coming in. He had six in the first quarter alone. Did it feel to you guys like they really wanted to make him a passer rather than a score? And was that something that was kind of planned on? Yeah, we, uh, you know, we anticipated them just being really aggressive in all of Karras' actions. Uh, putting up down you know, hedging a lot of the, the ball screens and you know guys are gonna have to make plays that's how it's probably gonna be for a majority of, of the series you know Karras is our best offensive player and teams are just gonna try and get the ball out of his hands so the rest of us are gonna be able to make plays but then we also gonna try and get him out in transition get those those stops and uh, allow him to kind of get out in open space and, and be able to attack downhill. Alex? Joe, when you guys went on that run at the end of the first half, it seems like the ball movement picked up and looked a lot like what it was in, in some of the seeding games. Do you attribute that to the pace you touched on, or was that something else that got that part going? I think you can attribute that to the defense. You know, again, they all go hand in hand. You know, when you're able to get stop, get stops, get out in transition, kick the ball ahead. Um, it seemed like, you know, everybody was kind of getting a touch. And then, you know, even when we're in the half court setting, the ball just kind of moved a lot better than it did uh, in the first half where, we might have been settling for that first uh, open jumper instead of trying to kind of work around me the defense work. Christian? I uh, got one more for you. Uh, obviously, a really good game from Tim today. Is, is this the same Tim that you were playing with earlier this season, or can you pinpoint a moment in this year where things kind of started shifting for him? Yeah, Tim is a, he's a great player. I think now he just has more of an opportunity to play, to show what he can do. And this is what happens. This is the nature of the NBA. There's tons of guys that, um, you know, given the opportunity, the right circumstance, right situation, they're able to come in in big ways and show what they can do. Julio? Hi, Joe. Um, this is your second time with the Nets going to the playoffs. Did you feel like being in the playoffs tonight? Um, I know there's no fans, but the, the intensity in the court, does it really feel like being in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's an adjustment for everybody being down here even from the get-go. But at the end of the day, you know, the level of basketball to play, you know, um, I mean, I wouldn't say that it's drastically different from what we were just used to. But, you know, everybody's locked in. We're focused. This is all we have to do down here is prepare to play against uh, the Raptors right now. So everybody's locked in. We watch a considerable amount of film. Um, you know, we don't have a ton of distractions, a lot of other stuff going on. So I think the level of play is elevated just solely on the back of that matter.